Welcome to Lifeway Kids Church Online. I'm Pastor Christine, and I am so glad you're here today. We are gonna be talking about creativity. Actually, we've been talking about creativity all month long. And if you remember, creativity is, Im is imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. Actually, God made us each in His image. We're all made in His image. He made us to be like Him. We can use the creativity that he gave us to make a difference in the world around us. Speaking of creativity, let's play a creative, a creative game. Are you ready for game time at home? I really love to be creative in the kitchen when I'm baking. Let me get my apron on here. Two ingredients that I use often are sugar and salt. Now they look a lot alike, but they taste really different, don't they? If you mix them up when you're baking, it could be a real disaster. Actually, a lot of foods use sugar and salt, but you've got to have the perfect amount of each one to get just the right flavor. For this game, I'll name some foods that someone may want to make. And I want you to vote if you think the recipe, the recipe calls for more sugar or if the recipe calls for more salt. Now, if you think that the recipe needs more sugar, what I want you to do is raise your right hand. If you think that the recipe needs more salt, then I need you to raise your left hand. All right, are you ready? All right, let's go. Okay, here's our first slide. If we were gonna make pixie sticks, would we need sugar or salt? If you said sugar, you got it right. All right, let's go on to the next one. If you wanted to make potato chips, would you wanna put sugar or salt? If you said salt, you got it right. Okay, let's go to our next recipe. All right, if you wanted to make chocolate chip cookies, do you need sugar or salt? If you said sugar, you got it right. But I'll tell you what, chocolate chip cookies uses a lot of sugar and sometimes just a little bit of salt. If you were gonna make Ice cream, would you need sugar or salt? That's right, sugar. All right, this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult. If you were gonna make guacamole, do you use sugar or salt? You said salt, you got it right. If you were gonna make giant pretzels, would you need sugar or salt? That's right, salt. Okay, if you were gonna make chocolate brownies, would you need sugar or salt? You guys are so good at this game. Yes, you would need sugar. Okay, if you were gonna make a triple layer chocolate cake, would you need sugar or salt? That's right, you would need sugar. Okay, guys. If you were gonna make a big bowl of steamed broccoli, would you need sugar or salt? Those of you who said salt, you got it right. If you were gonna make a bottle of ketchup, would you need sugar or salt? Sugar, that's right. Ketchup is sweet. That was so fun. You're really good at that game. Who knew that baking could be so creative? All right, speaking of creativity, it is time to raise our hands and worship our amazing God together. So if you would stand to your feet and take off your aprons, let's worship God together.
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna I just wanna thank you cause everything you made is so everybody, it's me, Jacob, and today we're getting creative with light. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. And God could tell you a thing or two about light. It was the first thing he created after all. Let there be light. Oh, no, too bright, too bright. Did you know that light can travel at 186,000 miles per second? If you were in a spaceship, it would take you three days to get to the moon. Light can travel to the moon in about a second. Fly me to the moon. Let me bump it in the stars. And never... You can use light in all kinds of creative ways. Not only can you make shadow puppets. <laughs> you need light to take pictures and make videos. This won't do at all. This is terrible lighting. Lights! No, no, down, down with the lights. No, too bright. Thank you. You can use lights to make a concert more exciting. You can even use light to communicate. S O S. Need help. I'm out of chocolate. Sad emoji. I don't actually know Morse code. In today's story, we're going to learn about another use for light. In fact, we're going to learn how you and me can be the light. I can make a bee. I can make a bee. It's, you gotta get the wings. Uh, oh, okay. Bee. I'm a bee. See you in a few. <laughs> hmm. A six legged chicken is chicken for everyone. Hmm. Sheep that can shear themselves. <laughs> A pair of glasses that'll let you see behind you. Oh, yeah. Beef jerky made out of chicken? Novels! Oh, this is the best idea yet! 
Oh, where do they come from? <laughs> so strange. Clothes that are made from other clothes. Pat Sajak, scented deodorant. <laughs> Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we're wearing awesome mustaches. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're chefs, and every self respecting chef has a mustache. Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a mustache. Okay, that's one. Bobby Flay, Emeril, Martha Stewart. Subpar chefs. They're like the most famous chefs in the world. Below par. Okay, who are the, the above par chefs then with mustaches? Chef Louis. Chef Lu the guy from The Little Mermaid? Uh -huh. That doesn't count. Oh, okay, what about uh, Chef Remy from Ratatouille? Oh, no, no, no. Those are whiskers, plus he's a rat and a cartoon. Uh. Doesn't count. Aha! What about the greatest chef in history, Chef Boyardee? He was a genius. <laughs> okay, you got me there. Mm -hmm. We're dressed like this because we are making an old family recipe today. Snickerdoodle soup surprise? Not your family's recipe. Uh. An old family recipe from someone who knows stuff. Ooh. Bonjour. Come on in, have a seat. Oh, this is cool. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Madeleine Lemold, but I am called Maddie, and I know quite a bit. I know every winner of the Tour de France for the last two decades. I know how to put together a Bugatti racing engine. Oh. But I am most known for what I can cook. Great, you're a cook. <laughs> Quoi? No, 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 no. I am a chef. And by the way, I do not have a mustache. Oh, it, it suits you. Merci. So uh, wh what are you going to cook for us today? Le poisson! Le poisson? <laughs> le poisson! Oh, I love le poisson! Oh, me too. <laughs> but uh, no. We are making a 250 year old recipe passed down in my family for generations. Ooh, sounds mysterious. What's the recipe for? French fries. You know, I heard that uh, French fries actually originated from the country of Belgium. Oh, so they're really Belgian fries. Yeah. No, they are French fries. Yeah, but if you look on the internet- They are French fries. Okay. Some people like to peel the potatoes. My family's recipe leaves the skin on. Now we cut them. All right, where do we- Voila! Start. You batter the fries. All right. Oh! This batter is what makes these french fries so special and so delicious. <laughs> this batter is made with flour ground from the wheat kernels from the finest wheat fields in France. Mm. <laughs> and then we add a precise amount of white grape juice squeezed by and directly into the bowl. Mm. And then, of course, this batter contains the Perfect blend of our secret family herbs and spices. Mm, yum! Better up! You yep. put the duck fat in the pot. All right, this is duck fat? Yes, of course. <laughs> what else would you cook in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Chef Maddie, uh, is there uh, is there like a recipe or something in a cookbook or on the internet that in case anyone wants to try this the at home? The internet? A cookbook? Quoi? No, 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 no. This is a secret family recipe. I was taught this recipe by my father, who learned it from his mother, who learned it from her great aunt, who learned it from her great grandfather, Chef Jean Baptiste Honoré Le Monde. Did he have a mustache? We do not. Tell people the secret of the recipe because then, then everyone would know it. 
Well, I just thought that if the recipe is, is so delicious that you would want other people to know it so they could, you know, share in the deliciousness. Huh. This is something I have not thought about. It, it has always just been a recipe passed down in my family. Oh, well, I can't wait to pass it down my throat and to my belly. So are we going to cook these Belgian fries or what? Yes, of course. You must bake them bit by bit at 375 degrees until they are golden brown. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you, you're sticking around to watch us cook them, right? Oh, I'm afraid not. No, I... I do not think I can keep this recipe to myself any longer. Everyone should know, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what? Be on the lookout for Chef Mandy's cookbook where all of my secrets will be revealed. Magnifique! Oh. Bye! She didn't even say bye. Well, she's in a hurry. Do you, you want to put these in the oven? Wee <sighs> wee. Oui, oui. Oh, you speak French now. No, 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 no. I, uh, I have to tinkle. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <sighs> ah! Oh! And I had to tinkle and put on some skin. Ow! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's that delicious smell? Oh, we're cooking up some French fries, Kellen. Yeah, they should be ready by the time the story's over. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to it. The story today comes from Jesus' most famous sermon in the Bible. And since Jesus preached this sermon from the side of a mountain, today we call it the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon from the Mouths? I thought all sermons were from the mouths. No, the Sermon on the Mount. It's short for mountain. A short mountain is called the hills. Okay. So everyone, this is my friend Horvath. Um, I'm guessing he's here to help me tell today's story. Thank you for having me on your shows, Kellens. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making a muscles bigger. Perfect. So I'll tell the story, and Horvath, you give us some exercises to help us remember it. All right. Let's do this. Okay, so Jesus was talking to a crowd of people from the side of a mountain. One of the things he said to his followers was this, you are the salt of the earth. Ah, first exercise. Okay, we are going to make salt for the earth. All right, so I put my hands on my hips like this and then rotate around. Click, 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 click. This is called the salt grinder. We do it 24 times. Ready? Go, one. Click, click, click. 14, click. Click, click, elastic girl, click, click, click. Three hole punch, click, click, click. 24, hey, we make salt of the earth. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Yeah. But what do you think Jesus was talking about when he said you are the salt of the earth? Yeah, so when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying we actually taste like salt. But salt is used to make food taste better, and salt is used to keep certain foods fresh. So maybe if we're the salt of the earth, Jesus was saying that we have the opportunity to make the world better somehow. You see? Okay. Um... Jesus kept going. He said, you are the light of the world. Ah, second exercise. We are not salt anymore. Click, 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 click. We are lights. So let us pretend to be lighthouses. Stand straight and rotate your head like a light all the way around. I call this, turn the lights on. We do it 137 times. Go, one. Uh, 26! Uh, grape nuts! Uh, Willie Shoemaker! Uh, 137! Oh, what's next, Kellens? Right. So first Jesus called people who followed him salt, and then he said we were light. Well, what do you think that means? 
Oh, no, don't, 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 don't do that again. No, no, no. Here, uh, maybe this will help. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? Right. Right. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they'll see the good things you do, and they'll bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think I understand. You do? No. Ah, that's okay. It can be confusing sometimes. Jesus was saying that if you are someone who trusts and follows him, you should live in such a way that brings light into what can sometimes be a dark world. You should be looking for creative ways to do things and creative ways to love others. And when we do that, it will point others to God. All right, let's do this. Seventh exercise. I call this one ladders to heaven. So we can point people to God's. Okay, so we raise our hands and legs is at the same times, just like we are climbing the ladders to heaven. And then when we reach the top, we point like this. Huh? Okay, we climb 45 of the ladder rungs. Go! One, 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 six, 45! Now point to God because he is the most important! Ah, 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 I think I need to take the elevator. Ah. Good idea. Bye, Horvath. Ah. Ah. Going down. Ah, ah, ah. 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 Well, just in case that wasn't clear, it boils down to this. You have the light inside of you, and it's up to you to decide how to use it. You can keep it to yourself, or you can let it shine. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, what are some ways we can shine our lights? Oh, there are so many different ways because everyone is so different. Sometimes it's as simple as being nice to someone. Anyone can do that. But sometimes you need to use your own unique talents and abilities to point people to God. What's important is that you don't keep it to yourself. I mean, do you ever think about how you'd feel if someone didn't point you to God? I'd feel so left out. Yeah, Jesus has been such a big part of my life. I want everyone to know him. Exactly. You're the best, Kellen. Thanks for shining your light. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do it. All right. Reveal the question. Who first told you about God's story? What a great question, because those were people who shone their light to us. For, for me, it was a, a, a guy named Brett in my senior class at high school. Oh, cool. For me, it was my, my grandmother. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. For me, it was my mom when she took me to Sunday school for the first time. Awesome. Are the fries ready yet? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. <laughs> yum, too. Also, yum. These are amazing. Yeah, good. We got to tell people about this. I think you're right. I think we should. No, now. We need to tell people right now. Hey, everybody, you got to try this. Okay, we'll see you guys next week for another so and so show. Long as it's all good. Try it right now. Right now. John. John. I'm ready to get ready. I'll be running. You do the spin. All of them. Jesus said that I am a light. He said that you are a light. And we should let our light shine so others can see it. And when we shine our lights, it will help point people to God. So, how do we shine our lights? Well, we can give someone a helping hand. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Oh. We can cheer someone on. 
You can listen when someone else needs to talk. That's my ear. Listening. Only you can shine your light the way you can. So get creative. All you have to do is treat others the way Jesus did. Love people, serve people, and treat people like they matter. Then you'll be giving people a glimpse of God's story. You'll show people how much God loves them and how much they matter to him. Here's the one thing to remember today. God created you to share his story. Tell people with your words what God has done or use your actions to point people to him. No matter what, let your light shine. I know I'll never forget that. I'll see you next time. Oh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Ugh. Bye. Ugh. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Question of the Week. This week's question is, who first told you about God's story? We'd love to hear from you, so ask your parents to help you leave a response on the Hub or on the Lifeway Facebook page. Have a great week. Bye. The August memory verse is, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Psalm 145, double dot three. You and I can be salt and light. Just like salt makes food taste better, we can make people's lives better. We can shine the light of God's love when we treat others with love and kindness. We can use our creativity to point others to God. We can show people what a difference He's made in our lives with the way we live every day. God's story is the good news for everyone, and with God's help, we can share it with others. Well, how do you do that, you may ask? Well, we can tell people about God. We can share all that He's done. We can tell them how much God loves them. But we can also show them. That's what it means to be salt and light. When we're kind to people, we're showing them that God is kind. When we're patient with people, we're showing them that God is patient. And when we love people, we're showing them that God loves them more than they could ever imagine. God created you to share His story. It isn't just about the words you say. God made you in His image. That means you can use your creativity to share His story in all kinds of ways. You can share His story with art, music, or even just being a good friend. Whatever gift or talent God gave you, you can use that to share God with others. Let's pray and ask God to help us live His way. Dear God, thank you for creating us in your image. It's so cool how you created us to be like salt and light as we share your story with others. Please help us treat people with love and kindness every day. We want our lives to show all that you've done for us. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Have a great week. Bye. Are you ready? I'm singing now. One, two, three, let's go. I was made to do amazing things. I know, I know. I was made to be his hands and feet. I know, I know. God made me to shine. 
Makes me come alive, makes me wanna live